Alrighty. Alright, so um, we're going to model our first character here. It's going to look something like this. Bipack character with two legs. Uh, of a spaceman, astronaut, whatever you want to call him. Um, it's going to be quite low poly. Uh, not too much details to it. And there isn't a design behind it. So we're going to kind of just um, go with the flow and see what we come up with. But it's going to look similar like this, where it consists of a body, um, a glass dome for a head, a helmet, gloves, and boots with a belt um, to kind of top it off. Alright, so let's head on to Maya. Alright, so here's our Maya. I'm just switch on the grid. Right, uh, when you first open Maya, you get this workspace, which is the Maya Classic workspace. If you want, you can always come up with new uh, um, edited workspaces, or perhaps start with one of the ones here, one of the presets here. So I'm going to choose Modeling Standard. Uh, it's, what's nice is it has Modeling Toolkit here in there as well. Maybe I'll just get my channel box. So I'll click there to get my channel box and kind of place it here in the tabs. <clears throat> Standard bit. Alright, we've got a lot of real estate to work with here in the viewport. So let's get to work. What we want is we're going to start with the body. And what we want is we want to get a polygon cylinder. Press F to focus it, to frame it in the viewport. Um, Essentially, what we're doing is box modeling, if you haven't figured out yet. Uh, well, even though the name is box modeling, uh, regardless whether you get a sphere, a cube, or a cylinder, that's basically box modeling. So the, it's just an umbrella term that uh, kind of represents modeling from a primitive. So here we start with a cylinder. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to my channel box and in the inputs here, click the poly cylinder here. What I want to do is increase the subdivisions in the height. So I click the name here, I can middle mouse button and drag to the right perhaps and increase the subdivisions like so. Looks good. All right. Um, all right, we're going to model with deformers, and you've seen this from previous subjects. Make sure you are in the modeling mode. Make sure uh, deform is here, and try and head down to nonlinear. You'll see that there are several nonlinear deformers here which you can use. I'm going to choose the second one, which is flare. All right. So you see that there's this thing, if I press 4, you'll see that that's how it looks like. That's basically a deformer and it's going to deform our cylinder here. I press 5 again. What I want to do is, uh, I want to kind of make the top a bit bigger compared to the bottom. So I want to change it in the, uh, if you can see it, the Z and X axis. So z and x so i'm gonna choose z and x z and x and again i'll make the mouse button to change the values and you'll see that it changes it uniformly z and x so i'll make it a bit smaller like like that perhaps it's good maybe a bit smaller let's see that's not too bad All right about that All right and also we want to bulge it up a bit so I think I'll just select the curve attribute here and yeah fatten that thing up a bit so we have a bit of volume so uh, our character isn't just simply a cylinder that's uh, pretty straight so it has kind of flash underneath it sweet all right now what we want to do is we want to apply a different deformer. So this is what we got so far by using the flare deformer. I'm going to go back to my deform here and go back to nonlinear. What I want next is the band deformer. Alright, so you'll see that band shows up here. 
Um, if you don't know what it is, you can always, by the way, if we press 4, you see that that's where the deformer is. I'll just press 4, why not? So with the deformers, what you need to do is just explore the attributes. So I know for a fact that curvature kind of, you know, bends it a certain way. Let's press 5, it's much more clearer that way. Alright, so I'm gonna do something like that perhaps. Yeah, so we're gonna give it a bit of bend because you know it's we kind of assume our character has something like a spine and it's kind of curving that way. So, alright, that's not too bad. So, yeah, so that's what we have so far. And also, like I said, you can always explore the um, the attributes here. And if you select low bound, you notice that that actually, let's press 4, that actually moves where the deformer affects the mesh. So if you kind of do that a bit, say you wanted it to be a bit straightened down there, you can change the low bound. And in fact, you get something like that, so it's much more flatter. You wouldn't have that, you know, that funny looking thing that we had earlier. All right. That's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, I decide to give it a flat surface at the bottom. Now, if you're done with that and if you're happy with the uh, torso that we have so far, uh, it's a good idea to delete the history. So we'll go to edit and we'll say delete by type history. Shortcut is alternate shift D. Ta-da! And all the deformers that belong to the mesh are now gone and we have a solid mesh that is, um, uh, which history has been cleared. Alright, we're going to move on to the next part, whereby we're going to model the helmet. See you then.